to my channel. So, because the identity of this specific character, as I was saying a bit, is a huge part of the plot of this manga, I decided to divide this video in two parts. So, in this main video, I will do and complete his masked version, and in a super spoiler video that will come out in a bit, I will show you the repaint and hair making and styling of his unmasked and revealed version. So today I'm gonna do, again, a character from a manga. And this manga in particular is actually the one who got me into reading a lot of them. And it is 20th Century Boys from one of my favorite mangakas, Nao Kurosawa. I didn't read all of his works, but I loved all the ones I read, and I'm super excited for Asadora that has just started to be published. So even if maybe I like Monster even more than 20th Century Boys, as I said before, I feel really sentimentally and personally connected to it. Also because I think that all the characters are really amazing, even the bad ones are understandable and sympathetic, and I think that Kenji is one of the best protagonists I ever read about, with this amazing song Bob Lennon that every time moves me. And also, the plot of the story is so good. It is an amazing thriller that really has so few flaws and managed to connect every single event in an almost perfect puzzle with a lot of flashbacks and flash forwards. So yes, I mainly love Kenji's group, obviously, and also Kana and Shono, but I really like also the character that I'm gonna create today the main villain, also called the friend. Okay, the discovery of his identity in the end isn't the main part of the manga, but it is simple, so thrilling and interesting to try to understand who he is, and in my opinion the revelation is really satisfying. And also his backstory in some way makes you really understand some things he does and almost make you empathize with him. Okay, so I can keep talking for ages about this manga, but I think that now is really time to go to the repaint. Okay, so because I have in mind to do a lot of other male characters in the future, I decided to buy this huge set of BTS dolls. And side note, I'm also super excited because I'm a big fan of them now. And it is kind of funny how in my videos you can see my journey from not knowing them at all in Griffith's video to starting to like them in Baron's video and the explosion of my obsession in this one. But I think that only the 1% of you is interested by all of this, so let's move over. So after unboxing them, I have to choose which one to use as a base. And I'm removing Young or V because he's my bias and he will be my own doll collection. So for this video I will need one body and two heads, but fortunately I have a spare head from Baron's video, so no body will be left without an head. And at the end I decided to use a Rams dolls and I'll explain later why. But firstly I have to prepare him by firstly removing all the clothes and cutting the hair. Then I'm dunking him in hot boiling water. To remove the head. I said remove the head. Okay, so what is happening is basically that there is a piece of silicone stuck in the neck peg. But after cutting it, removing the head is pretty easy. Then I removed all the leftover hairs with some pliers. And here I'm showing you why I used Namjoon's head. Basically because I don't think I'll ever use it, because it's really particular, in fact it has a really pointy jawline and one single dimple. Now it's time to test some new stuff. So, after 
after the tragedy that I experienced while removing doll faces in Chiaki's video, I decided to buy some true 100% acetone and I'm using gloves because the packaging make it seem like some serious chemical and dangerous stuff. But if you know doll, you'll know that BTS heads are really difficult to remove. So I'm using a normal doll head as a test. And OMG, it removes it perfectly. Finally, I don't have to spend 30 minutes only for removing the face. And now it's time to prepare myself to the big pain of removing freaking BTS doll faces. <laughs> Twenty minutes later. Okay, so it took a while, but less than other time, so it is really okay. So, between all the anime and manga characters with super bold and particular designs, I choose a middle-aged man with a simple elegant outfit. But I promise you that the next character I will do is really in typical anime style. But the good thing is that I basically have to reduce step by step the original outfit the doll came together with Jimin's tie. So it should be fairly simple. <laughs> So, firstly, I'm deconstructing the whole outfit. And tracing all the parts on paper to create pattern pieces. To make the sweet part made by pants and jacket, I'm taking an old shirt of my father and I really like to use fabric from old clothes because it reduces the waste and it is also cheaper. And in addiction, this fabric was just in the perfect color. For the pants, I'm firstly hemming top and bottom. And finally, I managed to do a shot of me sewing with the sewing machine, yeah! And here I'm showing you that every time I finish to sew a piece, I'm making what thread came to the same part and knot them to really secure the stitches. Now I'm sewing the crotch part, leaving an opening for the closure. And a little advice, when you sew a rounded edge with the machine, really use your time and go slowly to not mess up. Now I'm noticing that this fabric that is simply in a greyish color is doing really trippy and strange things to my camera. But besides the nonsense, now I'm closing the leg parts, placing everything right side. And another thing I learned after making a lot of mistakes is to always keep the edges like the end of the legs part at the same level before sewing it with the machine, otherwise it will come out really crooked. I am removing the excess from the seam allowance and turning everything right side. Now I'm also aiming these rough parts and adding a snap button as a closure. So for the jacket I connected right side these pieces, sewing only some parts and leaving free this upper part. Then I folded everything and kept everything flat with my air straightener. Then I connected these two pieces that are the front ones to the back piece at the top. Then I attached the pre-hemmed leaves using a lot of pins to keep everything in place.
and then I'm sewing everything by hand because I wouldn't ever dare to sew this curved and super tricky part with the machine because I will totally manage to sew my own fingers. <laughs> and after this I'm sewing it close. turning it right side. To create the collar part I'm sewing good side to good side these two strange shapes and after folding everything I connected it like so. And now it's time to add some details. So for the pockets I'm taking a rectangle of fabric and folding all the edges. Then I'm securing everything with some fabric glue. Then I created roughly in the same way the upper parts of the pockets and joined them together. And finally glued it in place on the jacket. And to be able to open and close it adding some little magnets in the back part to keep them hidden and also cover them with some fabric pieces. Then I also sculpted two super tiny buttons with the epoxy sculpt. And added them after painting them in black. Finally, all the sweets part are completed. I show you really quickly the making of the shirt because I basically did the shirt in every single repaint I already did. So I'm using another old shirt from my father, connecting back and front at the top, adding the sleeves, closing everything and adding a collar after I have already hemmed all the rough sides. Now I'm taking the shirt the doll came with, stealing from it the buttons and the velcro, because finding velcro as thin as the one from factory made doll clothing is almost impossible. <laughs> and then gluing all the stilled parts on my shirt to finish it. For the tie I'm using this beautiful red satin by cutting it in this really strange shape obtained by deconstructing Jimin's tie before. Then I firstly folded the end to create the triangular shape and then I folded also the two sides. and kept everything in place with some fabric glue. And so I obtained a tie. And yes, I really watched the tutorial to understand how to tie a tie. <laughs> For these shoes I'm also taking the ones that came with the doll. And because I basically need only the base of them, I started removing all the raised details beside the laces with my exacto knife. Thank you. 
Then I wore a mask for safety because it's time to sand this super rough surface. And by sanding I also managed to change a bit the shape by making them pointier and also created a sort of little heel on the soles. And here you can see the before and after, pretty different. I painted them with some black acrylic and protected the paint with some glaze. And I don't know if it is really visible, but I used a matte varnish on the soles to give it more details. Coming back to the head, I'm now creating his mask. So firstly I took an elastic and sewed it close on his neck. Then I'm taking two pieces of stretchy white fabric and placing them like so. And sewing the two parts close around the head. Then I flipped everything right side and now it seems like someone kidnapped the poor man. So I completely escaped this idea and started again. So, in the end, I had to make it permanent on the doll head, but this isn't a big deal because, as I said before, RM heads would have been probably unused. So, I'm painting it white because I noticed that my fabric is a bit transparent. Then, I took a big rectangle of the same stretchy fabric as before and painted the front symbol with some black fabric paint. And as with Chiaki's patch, I'm really proud of the result and I also think that painting these tiny things is kinda meditating and calming. And then I brutally hot glued everything on the doll set and it came out pretty good, besides the back, but you know, the back is in the back. <laughs> Let's take our second head, and to minimize all the possible spoilers, I'm not letting you know what BTS said I decided to use for this. And also, I hope that all this thing with the two heads is not getting too much confusing for you, because I'm almost getting confused too. So I'm cutting the back of the head and attaching two magnets inside, that I also covered with some fabric to keep them secured in place. After closing the head, I used some masking tape to protect the face because I'm going to use some epoxy sculpt to create his other two masks. But before, I placed two magnets on the front so that later the masks will stay on the face thanks to the other two magnets inside the head. So firstly, for both of them, I slapped some epoxy sculpt on the face to create the basic shapes. Then I added some other clay to create the proper shapes. And I also used some wire as an armature to make this particular part of one of the masks stay up. And I kept smoothing everything using a lot of water.
Now I'm engraving some details and I'm doing only the mouth on the more iconic friend mask. And for the you know what character I'm talking about if you read the manga mask, I had to do a lot more details. like the brows and the eyes. Now that the base of the first mask is dry, I can remove it. And add, as a final detail, his little nose. But we have to do a lot more on this second one, like adding these strange side things. Sculpting a nose that at the beginning seems a lot like Squidward nose from Spongebob. Now I'm adding some lips. and a little gem on the forehead. And I'm also removing this when everything is dry. And can I say that I'm really proud? Because mainly this second one was really detailed and complicated to sculpt. Now I'm sanding all the rough parts, mostly the edges, because surprisingly I managed to sculpt them really smooth. And now it's time to paint them, and I'm starting with the one that the friend wears the most. Firstly I'm doing a base coat in beige, then the bandana-like part in blue, I'm refining the mouth in Cision, in, in uh, I, I can pronounce it, in Cision, I think, <laughs> with some red paint. And with the same paint and a super tiny brush, I'm doing these strange swirls on the cheeks. And to finish it, I'm adding some eyes. And after finishing one, let's go straight to the second one. Here I did a base coat of grey and painted the deeper parts with a darker grey to add some sort of shadows. Then I painted in the eyes with a really dark grey. And 
and colored the gem in red. Now we have to protect these two really time-consuming paint jobs and to do so I'm using some layers of a mixture of matte varnish and water. And I'm using some gloss with pearly powder inside to make the gem on this mask stand out. And after simply adding some embroidery thread as laces on the masks, they are done. And now it's time to unit all the parts. And yes, the mask are in there because I may or may not have shot this part before I finish them, but I didn't tell you anything. <laughs> Ok, so now it's time to show you what I learned with the tutorial on how to tie a tie. And after the biggest success of my life, we only have to add the shoes and the jacket. And here is Defend. quite some time on it, this one was definitely a less detailed and more easygoing project, but this really gave me the opportunity to make things with more cure and attention, like for one time my clothes aren't staying together only by divine power. And also my next project will be really complex, so at least I rested a bit in some way. Ah, and obviously stay tuned for the second and really spoiler part of this video. But now tell me, did you already know about this manga or another work from Naoki Urasawa? And also let me know in a comment what do you think of the outcome of this doll. Have a nice day and bye!